Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is going to be another episode. If I'm not wrong, this would be episode four, I believe. Um, what I'm doing is just uh, using a bit of, um, doing a bit of bibblemancy using the book Women Who Run With Wolves. Um, as I've said in the previous um, episodes before, um, I don't um, really divulge meaning because I believe everyone finds their own meaning um, when I do these. But it is, sim then it is similar to using it as you would a tarot or an oracle deck. I merely just kind of feel into where I need to open the book and where my eyes are drawn to and that will be the message that I share with you. Um, and then I just kind of leave it at that because like I said, I believe that everyone finds their own um, messages um, and it speaks to everyone differently. So far be it for me to tell you what the meaning is for you. So we're in chapter nine, uh, returning to oneself, homing. Returning to oneself. Women's Innate Ecology. In the tale, it is said that many try to hunt the soul to capture and kill her, but no hunter is able. It is one more fairy tale references to the indestructibility of the wild soul. Even if we have been working, even if we have been working, sexing, resting playing out of cycle, it does not kill the wild woman. It only tires us out. The good news is, is that we can make the necessary corrections and return to our own natural cycles again. It is through the love for and the caring for our natural seasons that we protect our lives from being dragged into someone else's rhythm, someone else's dance, someone else's hunger. It is through validation of our distinct cycles for sex, creation, rest, play, and work that we reclaim and define and discriminate between all our wild senses and seasons. We know that we cannot live the confiscated life. We know there is a time when things of men and the people and things of the world must be left for, for, be left for a while. We have learned that we are like amphibians. We can live on land, but not forever, not without trips to the water and to home. Overly civilized and overly oppressive cultures try to keep women from returning home. Too often, she is warned, she is warned away from the water until she is thin as a dime and dimmed in light. But when we call for extended leave to home comes, a part of her always hears has been waiting to hear. When the call to home comes, she will follow, has been secretly or not so secretly preparing to follow. She and all the allies of her inner psyche will restore her ability to return. This empowering process does not apply to just a woman here and a woman there. It applies to all of us. Everyone comes snaggered, snagged by land commitments. Yet the old one out in the sea calls everyone. Everyone must return. None of these ways to return home are dependent on economic, social status, education, or physical mobility. Even if we can only see only one blade of grass, even if we have only a quarter foot of sky to scry, even if we have only a, rat, a rangy weed coming through the crack in the sidewalk, we can see our cycles in and with nature. We can all swim out to sea. We can all commune with the seal from the, from the rock. All women must have this union, mothers with children, women with lovers, single women, women with jobs, women in the doldrums, women riding high on the world, introverted women, extroverted women, women with industrial strength responsibilities. 
Jung said, It would be far better simply to admit our spiritual poverty. When spirit becomes heavy, it turns to water. Therefore, the way of the soul leads to the water. The return home and the intervals of conversing with the seal from the rock in the sea are our acts of innate and integral ecology, for they all are a return to the water, a meeting with the wild friend, the one who above all others loves us unremittingly, unguardedly, unguardedly, and with profound endurance. We only, we need only look into and learn from those soulful eyes that are wild and wise and loving. Thank you for bearing with me. I didn't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> That's okay. We, we made it through. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's reading. Um, if you haven't already, um, if you'd like to consider subscribing to my channel, I'll be doing these regularly, but I don't have a schedule. Um, I really do enjoy bringing parts of this book um, to you. Um, see if there's anything else I would want to tell you. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram if you'd like, at Holler Moon Mountain, and on Facebook. I um, also have a private group if you are interested in something like that. I do share these and, and much more in uh, Holler Moon Mountain Magic. Um, it is a private group. Um, I also have an Etsy store if you're interested. I have a an oracle deck that I've created, the Holler Moon Mountain Oracle. And, um, yeah, that, that does it. Not really good at uh, really selling myself, but I do have some offerings there. But, um, anyway, terrible at openings and closings, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll put any information about the book and uh, where you can find me in different platforms in the uh, description. It is also in the uh, about section on my channel. So anyway, I hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend. And until next time, many blessings from the holler. Bye.